And it's about time we've talked about Mars once again. More updates, more exciting discoveries, and actually some discoveries that nobody expected. But I usually start these Mars videos with some kind of a really cool picture from one of the Martian missions. And this time we might even have two. Here's the first one. Now you can probably tell what this is, mostly because around this time we're going to be having one of these right here on planet Earth. But this is essentially a lunar eclipse, but a version from Mars. This is Moon Phobos passing in front of the Sun, and this picture was taken by Perseverance rover in February of 2024. You can actually find the raw images for this if you look in one of the links in the description that has a lot of raw images from Perseverance. Here you have to look under February 8 and you'll actually see over 70 pictures basically from the beginning of the lunar eclipse to the end. But the second picture I wanted to show you is this. This is basically the end of ingenuity. These images were actually posted a while back, but were then processed by a German university student, Simon Schmaub. And intriguingly, he even located the missing blade. It was hidden in the sand 15 meters away from Ingenuity. And since this image was taken from approximately half a kilometer away, or about 1500 feet away, finding this was probably not very easy. And so after 72 flights, this is how the mission ends. Or does it? Because apparently it's not over yet. As a matter of fact, apparently, it's still kind of doing science. And this is something that was recently reported during one of the NASA streams, and something you can confirm yourself if you once again go to that raw image section and look at some of the images from Ingenuity. It's still releasing images very actively, but it seems to have only one shot in all of them. They all basically kind of look like this. But there is a method to this madness. This is all science. It's taking pictures of exactly the same spot and sending them back to Earth from its downward facing camera. And this only has one purpose learning about geological processes on Mars by sort of creating a time lapse showing us how all of this changes over time. Now, it's not done yet, it's actually not done processing the images, and it's going to be taking a few more, but eventually this will probably teach us a lot about how dust and various tiny particles of rock respond to Martian weather and Martian wind. So yeah, talk about one mission that just doesn't want to end, and a mission that's overachieved way beyond what was expected. And so we'll probably come back and talk more about the helicopter once there are some updates once again. Although I guess calling it a helicopter is no longer appropriate. It's more of a stationary, single-blade camera at this point. Here's actually another really cool video from Perseverance itself, showing us how it kind of looks to drive on Mars. But Perseverance is obviously conducting a lot of important scientific studies. And here, by using some of the recent radar images, researchers actually realized that it's in the perfect location to find fossilized life, if it ever existed here. And that's because this location, Jezero Crater, seems to contain a lot of telltale signs of what seems to be a lake bed and signs of an ancient river. And specifically, there are signs that this crater was formed 4 billion years ago and later filled with a lake that eventually resulted in a lot of sediments very similar to what we find in lakes and rivers on Earth. And much of the sediment here was probably carried from all over the place. And so if there was any life present here, it would have been carried into this lake by all of these rivers, and some of these sediments might have been already picked up by Perseverance and could actually have signs of life inside of them already. But unfortunately, there's really no way for us to remotely establish this, and so the samples have to be retrieved, or someone has to go there and try to analyze it on site. And so even though we actually see signs of various organic compounds, at the moment, there is no way to determine if they are biogenetic or abiogenetic, or basically produced by life or just through natural processes. But at least one of the mysteries of these processes has been recently solved by another study you can find in the description. And this is actually one of the oldest mysteries on Mars that has always kind of hinted on the potential existence of life somewhere on the surface. For several decades now, Researchers have observed signs of methane that seems to fluctuate in the Martian atmosphere. Now, we know that on planet Earth, methane can either come from natural geological processes or sometimes from life, actually quite a lot of times from life. And when we see something that's cyclical or periodic, very often it's actually the life that's causing it and not necessarily geological activity. And this periodicity was officially confirmed by a curiosity, as you can see right here. So it seems to actually change seasonally, as if something grows on Mars in the summer and in the fall, and then disappears in the winter. 
So kind of like trees or something, right? Or I guess some kind of a bacteria. And that by itself was a really groundbreaking discovery for astrobiology, but naturally there was no evidence of anything alive yet. Luckily this time nobody jumped the gun and started to claim that this is indeed life. This time scientists were actually really careful. And that sort of paid off. It doesn't seem to be life. At least for now. Once again, the source of this methane is very likely geological and possibly from somewhere underground. As always, you can find this study in a description, but in essence, this was a study that modeled how methane is absorbed by various rocks when there is no life present inside of them, which is actually a temperature dependent process. In other words, in certain temperatures, rocks absorb more methane, in other temperatures, they absorb less. And so these simulations actually predicted that there should be a kind of a methane pulse right before Martian sunrise, especially during the northern summer season that just recently ended. And turns out that the observations from Mars seem to confirm this. So the levels of methane don't just fluctuate seasonally, they also fluctuate daily. Something that we actually did not know before. But more specifically, they were able to explain what's happening here. And specifically the observations from Curiosity rover. These emissions seem to be driven by barometric pressure, or basically atmospheric pressure, that seems to pump methane into certain locations depending on the time of the day and thus changes the variation, making it appear periodic. And so basically it's a combination of air pressure, wind and the temperature of certain rocks. With all of this essentially recreated in their study by using very porous rocks that we know are present on Mars as well. And so, at least for now, once again, it doesn't actually look like this is life either. This explanation right now makes a lot of sense. And more importantly, it might even answer questions about objects like Titan, where similar patterns have been detected in the past. And so methane, despite being one of the most important biosignatures, potentially can fool us this way as well. But it doesn't mean that life here does not exist. As a matter of fact, one of the more recent astrobiological studies discovered something really, really interesting. Here they recreated similar conditions to Mars inside a lab. Basically using a Martian regolith replica, very cold temperatures, low atmospheric pressure, no oxygen, and quite a lot of radiation. And then they took four different bacterial species and put them inside, just to see what happens. And all four of these bacteria are known to infect humans as well, so this was actually to test if some of the bacteria that are deadly to us can maybe endanger some of the Martian missions. Turns out, they can. All four bacteria were capable of surviving in these hostile conditions for a relatively long time. And though some of them were not able to grow and were just surviving for maybe a day or so, eventually coming to their demise, with one of the main reasons being lack of water, one of them, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, a multi-drug resistant pathogen that can be actually found everywhere, was somehow able to not just survive but multiply and thrive basically making these fake Martian conditions its new home. Now the other ones survived for approximately three weeks or so, so still quite impressive, but just the fact that one of them was able to basically live on Mars is a huge discovery. First of all suggesting that the astronauts going to Mars will have to be super careful, there's a really high chance some of these pathogens might easily survive in the Martian colony and thus result in a lot of different sicknesses, but second of all, it means that if life ever lived here, it might still be there as well. If an Earth bacteria can survive on Mars, so why not a Martian bacteria? Definitely an important astrobiological discovery. And on top of astrobiology, we had some really important discoveries about Martian geology. One of the first studies that you can find in the description makes an interesting proposition. Basically, Mars potentially had its own version of plate tectonics for a very long time. But instead of being horizontal plate tectonics, like on Earth, where basically plates move under one another, forming a lot of different geological formations, on Mars it might have been something slightly different. Here plate tectonics might have been vertical and most likely caused by a multitude of enormous volcanoes everywhere. Something that most likely happened on early Earth 3 to 4 billion years ago as well. And so this is actually called vertical tectonics. In essence, it kind of looks like this. The planet's crust collapses into the planet's mantle, melts and reforms inside of it, and then gets injected with high concentration of silica through enormous volcanoes around the surface. And though this might sound far-fetched, it actually explains one important observation from the surface of Mars. It explains very high levels of silica, usually around or inside volcanoes, all over Mars. And it also explains why Martian volcanoes 
ended up being so enormous compared to what we have on Earth. It was basically the only way for the planet to release all of the heat from inside and to basically maintain its own geological processes. Which also meant that there was definitely some kind of a recycling going on and some kind of an evolution of magma very similar to what happened on early Earth. And on Earth, as you probably know, around this time that's when life formed as well. So yeah, why not Mars? And because this also explains what very likely happened on our own planet, this is a very important process to study just to understand if this can happen elsewhere as well. But interestingly, researchers from a completely different field and studying something entirely different, completely by accident discovered yet another enormous volcano right in the plain view. The giant volcano you see right there. Now it currently does not have an official name, but the researchers are calling this Noctis Volcano, just because of the Noctis Labyrinthus that's next to it. But this volcano also seems to be hiding a possible sheet of buried glacier ice. And it's huge in size. This volcano is at least 450 kilometers across and is elevated up to about 9 kilometers. That's absolutely enormous. With the geology around it suggesting that it was probably active for a very, very long time. The researchers even suggest that there's a chance it might still be active even today. Just dormant for now. And so here the researchers found 5,000 square kilometers of various volcanic deposits, a sign of extreme activity over millions and millions of years. And though it might not resemble a volcano from a distance, there's definitely a telltale sign of a caldera remnant right there. And it very likely contains some kind of an ancient lava lake. Yet around it we see signs of a lot of typical volcanic activity. Signs of pyroclastic flows, lava flows, but also a lot of hydrated minerals, and more importantly, unusually broken terrain that was actually produced through explosive steam venting. Which actually suggests one really important thing. It means that a lot of this hot volcanic material most likely interacted with a lot of water or ice-rich surface, resulting in massive explosions and the terrain reobserving. So in other words, there is a lot of hidden water and potentially a massive glacier. But because this was such a long time ago, and because this is such an ancient active volcano, over time it changed dramatically in shape and so it does not look like one anymore. But in terms of chemistry and specifically minerals found here, such as for example sulfate deposits, mostly made out of gerocyte, a kind of a hydrous sulfate, cannot be explained in any other way except for interaction of pyroclastic materials with a lot of water or ice, resulting in specific chemical reactions that we also observe on Earth. And because of these conditions, including liquid water and a lot of warmth, the obvious question is, could this have been a source of life? And so yeah, this is definitely now a prime location to start looking for a lot of exciting stuff, including water deposits and maybe bacterial life. And last but not least, there was another study that decided to focus on craters. And here we're talking about asteroid craters, focusing on one called Corinto. It was created approximately 2.3 million years ago and was very likely a result of a collision under a certain angle. And this allowed the scientists to then try to figure out where all of the leftovers and all of the explosive debris ended up landing. And here they actually wanted to answer one simple question. How many additional craters would be created as a result of the ejecta from the main explosion? And while the results were maybe a little bit surprising, they discovered over 2 billion secondary impact craters that were larger than 10 meters in size. Implying that many of the craters on Mars are very likely secondary ejecta and were not caused by the main impactor. And also some of them landed as far as 1800 kilometers away. Basically making this a really powerful event, but also an event that very likely happened many times, transforming the Martian surface and making it appear as it appears today. But once again, interestingly, there are signs of some kind of an interaction with water. This asteroid, when it hit Mars, seems to have landed in a location full of water ice because there are a lot of signs of degassing and signs of the interaction with superheated ice. So once again confirming that there are a lot of water deposits everywhere and a lot of them are basically hidden as underground ice. Naturally important for astrobiology studies, but also important for any potential crewed mission in the future. And on that note, that's pretty much all I wanted to mention. Lots of different exciting discoveries and a lot of really good research and some really cool pictures. But if you want to learn more about Mars from the last year or so, check out some of the videos in the description. On that note, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, 
Support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.